All right, what's up everyone? It's Dave with Kato Productions here. And today what I'm gonna try and do is explain how to set up the control surface in an integrator inside Reaper. Uh, I've been working on it with this thing for a year. Um, thanks to Jeff over on the Reaper forms, I will uh, probably link all this stuff, um, you know, in the description and all of that. Um, I'm really doing this video for one of the four members who asked for a video how to set this up, but um, I have been meaning to try to do this. So um, the first thing you want to do is download the file. Uh, if you're already on the forums, you know where to get the file. If not, I'll link it. So you download it. Uh, I have a lot of iterations here, as you can see, because this thing changes a lot. So um, disclaimer, maybe what I say today will not be relevant <laughs> later. Uh, so you download it and you open it, right? And you get stuff, right? So what you're going to need is you're going to need the, um, if you're on Windows, you're going to need the DLO, right? So 64-bit or 32-bit. And that goes here into the plugins folder. So you can simply just drag it over there, drop it in there, okay? If you're using another operating system, hopefully something looks familiar. I don't know anything about mac os or any of this stuff okay um all right so that's step number two, one all right step number two uh in your uh root reaper folder i'm not see i use a portable installation so my root reaper folder is like literally like it's right there boom you're gonna want the this folder csi you're gonna want that whole folder in the root folder okay so do that all right, and then next, let's open what's inside there. Uh, this stuff is legacy stuff. Now, I, don't, I probably don't even need that. Uh, I'm just going to delete it because I think that's, I mean, it's legacy stuff. So I don't, I'm not doing OSC because I don't know anything about OSC, but I am going to cover the MIDI stuff. So if you have like the guy on the form, if you've got the Behringer X Touch, if you've got an MCU, Mackie MCU, if you've got what I have, the Icon Pro X, um, you know, stuff like that, anything that's got some MIDI stuff, um, this is what, uh, this is how you're going to set it up. So the first thing you want to do is go to surfaces, okay? I'm going to go to MIDI. And there's a lot of stuff here. Um, but anyone using, like I've got the Pro X, the QCon Pro X. Um, I have a few of them here, but don't worry about that. If you've got the Behringer X Touch, the 8 fader version, they're all based off the MCU for the most part. So what I would do, and all this file is, is a text file that's labeled instead of .txt, it's .mst. So if you've got anything else, all right, I that's similar to the MCU unit, I would open this up. First thing I would do is save as. Um, I would save that right there in the same place. And I would call it, I don't know, whatever your surface is. Um, something else dot MST. Okay. Now... All right, this is where we start getting uh, into the nuts and bolts of things. Uh, everything here is where you see widget, and it's got a label. The label here is should correspond to a button on your control surface. And what this is, is an address of that actual button on your control surface. So the next thing that you're going to want to do um, is download this thing called... MIDI aux, all right? This tool is free, and what it lets you do is, sorry, let me find that file again. What it lets, lets you do is confirm like the address of any button, any fader, any knob on your control surface. And that way you can basically create this file. It's big because it is every button um, it's every fader, it's the display, it's a lot of stuff. But once you get this set up, and if you're using an MCU-like unit, like a Pro X, like a X-Touch, this stuff is going to be the same. Some of them might, like you might not have a button labeled plugin. Uh, this Pro X 
didn't have one before, but now it does. Basically because they had the button address, but no button labeled plugin. Then they changed the label and now it's that button. So you might not have instrument. You might not even have that button, but what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna open this up and go to uh, like this and set that up. Whoops, we've got it in and out, hit okay. And you go to a button like, let's find something that we do have. Like if we've got one of those, you've got a bank button, right? So if I go to the bank left button and I press it, there's the address, 92E7F. Where am I at? Bank left, 92E7F. So a lot of this stuff is already done for you. You just have to go through and verify the buttons. If I go to bank right, let's look at what it is on the screen here. This is the bank right on this button. has an On my surface, it has an eight and then two arrows going to the right, whereas the bank left had an eight and two arrows going to the left. So I'm going to press bank right and it's 92F. All right. So you just got to go through all of this stuff and verify all of your buttons and whatever is listed here, okay, flip, uh, or especially now, um, instrument, EQ, plugin, pan and pan, I think, and send and plugin and e, maybe EQ or um, I think they've all copied, but instrument and track, I don't think are on, or not on my surface, I don't think are on the X-Touch. So this is where you just, you're going to want to get, uh, okay, for instance, I have on my surface, all right, I'll pull up mine real quick. I lost myself. Let me just show you. Uh, I have on the Pro x new firmware that's my latest one i have these buttons that i labeled uh for instance there's uh they made this dual layer so now i have all the function buttons the f8 buttons now there's also a f uh, f1 layer 2 and f2 layer 2 f3 layer 2 i created those buttons just by taking the address if i hold the layer button and I do F1, it brings me that address there. And I just create that. I write it in there, and now I've created that button in this surface file. So that's very important, because that's how you're, that's the first step, is you're basically creating the button map file, right? So whatever you want to label it, you label it whatever you want. I've also got some buttons here that are just totally blank. They're just blank buttons. They're there. They don't have any labels, but they work. So I just labeled them blank just so I can keep track of them for the next step. So a recap, you need to just go through and verify all of your buttons. I know it sounds like a lot of work, and it is, but once you do that, it's set. You never come back to this unless... You, have, you Honestly, you never come back to this. Once it's set up, you never have to come back to this unless Jeff changes something, right? Like, for instance, he changed some of the uh, press release buttons like Shift. All of those got changed. Shift, Option, Control, they used to be... This statement used to be something else. Sometimes that stuff will happen, and that's just part of what this is about, all right? Hopefully you're with me so far and I haven't lost you. Um, I'm probably going to need 10 more minutes to explain this, okay? So, the first step, download the file, the zip file, move the contents in the appropriate place, okay? The next step is set up your surfaces. And if you're like me, you have more than one surface. So, I've got not only the main control surface, the Pro X, but then I've got the extender, and then I've got a C4, and then I've got even a fader port, and I have other stuff that I haven't even set up yet, but um, only this sur control surface integrator will let you do that. There's nothing else out there that will let you do stuff this deep, so stay with me. Okay, let's go back to the main Reaper folder. Let's go back to our CSI folder. 
now we've defined our surfaces now let's define the zones okay and I'm only gonna get into setting up the basic stuff I'm not gonna even getting get into setting up plugins and all that because that is uh, actually that may even happen on its own uh, but for now let's just get into that okay so what we did before is we created some uh, something else right we created a file called something else now let's do the same thing let's copy the mcu which is what we copied before because we have an mcu like unit uh, maybe you have a fader port 16 and you can just copy that i would copy it so you always have something to fall back on right so, uh, like an original state to go back if you missed anything because this is all coding so if you're a coder you probably know how important it is to make sure everything is exact but if you're not and you overlook stuff it's always important to have something to fall back on so i'm going to make a copy of this at least i thought i was going to uh copy to zones all right and i'm going to label this something else i'm going to label the folder it's important to have a folder of the uh, uh, of the name of the your unit or uh, the same one that you that you put in the surfaces it's important to have a separate one uh, well I think it's important I think it's important just to kind of keep track but you'll see why in a minute uh, okay so I have something else and it's based on this MCU zone file so now this is a zone file and again this is only a text file that is labeled um, dot z o n so we're going to call this something else dot zone z o n and um a lot of this stuff i still don't understand and i'm not even going to try to explain it but the important thing is we have things like send okay and track and these are the buttons that we already defined previously right Previously, we defined all of these buttons in a file called something else, track, send, pan. Now, we've given them actions. And these, you don't get to, well, yes, you can create some of this stuff, but some of this stuff is already dictated by the program, right? And you need these statements. Some of this stuff can actually be Reaper actions. And that's really what's awesome about this is that you can literally assign... If I want the read button, instead of it actually triggering the automation, if I want it to, you know, mute all tracks, I could find the Reaper action that does that and make it so. You have the statement Reaper and then the command ID. It's so, but a lot of this stuff is already set up for you. Once you set up everything in the MST file, this stuff should all just work if this stuff should all just work i'm not going to try to explain what this stuff is the most important thing is that you have set this up and then you can come over here and test all of these all right um i'm trying to think of a way if i can explain it but i don't think i should i think i will just butcher it okay so that's before you even load reaper <laughs> all right so let's close everything. Well, I don't need to close it. Let's just start Reaper. And uh, let's go to uh, Preferences and Control OSC and Control Surface Integrator. Okay. Now, I have some stuff here. Forget all that. What we're going to want to do is add. Okay. And we've got a page name. This is going to screw up all my stuff probably, but it doesn't matter. You won't actually see the surface stuff happening. But, um, okay, page name. Let's just call it something else. Um, you might want to do something logical. Like I have, I call it console, and then I call it, it's basically a MCP view and a TCP view. And that's it. 
Um, and those pages, I shouldn't even get. You just want to create one page. Start If you have one surface, just start with creating one page, right? If you have um, like a like uh, an MCU-like surface, you probably want it to follow the mixer control panel, right? Because it's a mixer. I don't know. I'm just assuming. But basically, this is going to either follow your track control panel this way or your mixer control panel faders that are this way right um, uh, sync pages means like if I'm if I'm selecting say track 10 and then I switch to another page I'm still on track 10 or something like that and then you want Reaper follow surfaces that's always helpful but okay you could check that stuff that's easy now we're on something else and now we have to add surfaces right and this is going to look familiar. These names can be whatever you want, okay? They can be whatever you want. Um, you have to select the MIDI in for whatever you're using, okay? And then it should be the same MIDI out. So I'll do the Pro X, since that's the most relevant. And now you're going to select the surface file. We created something else.mst, boom. Now we select the zone folder and we created that zone folder, something else. Boom, we put that in there. And this stuff, whatever, sync zones across surfaces. Like, so if you have many of these, right, uh, many different surfaces, if you have the Behringer X Touch plus the X Touch extender, then yeah, you'll probably want to sync the zones. But I'm not going to assume for you, but that's what that does. Okay, this stuff is more like advanced when you set up other stuff, but for now, let's just get you going. Okay, once you've done that, hit OK, and maybe everything will work, all right? That's basically it. When you get to Reaper, that's all you have to do is just basically point Reaper to uh, your files and the control surface MIDI ports and then give it some names and that's basically it so uh yeah this video took me uh 17 minutes i didn't i thought it'd take about 20 minutes to do that's it's not easy but uh once you get the hang of it and once you set up some of your stuff uh the rest is it will start coming naturally and you'll start getting these workflow ideas hopefully and i think you'll see how great of a system this is so I hope you learned something and uh, and I hope it was helpful. All right, later.